Maps that are fascinating. Europe divided by equal GDP. Okay, so there's six regions and they all have basically the same collective economy size. So the blue's just four countries, Iceland, UK, Ireland, and Denmark. But these four countries are equal to GDP to basically the entirety of Eastern Europe, which is about 20 countries. And I assume it'd probably be pretty similar if it was just the UK. Oh, did not notice Germany. That's not even the entirety of Germany, but they've got the biggest GDP on there. I didn't realize France's GDP was as big as that as well. Not even the entirety of France. Obviously, we've got Netherlands and Belgium and Luxembourg shoved in. But yeah, I think all this map's showing is just how poor Eastern Europe currently is. People's reaction when you start speaking their language. Okay, so in English-speaking countries, if you as a foreigner start speaking English, it is so normalized that people aren't impressed at all. Over in countries like Germany, Sweden, and Norway, the reaction is apparently, that's cute, but let's just speak English, shall we? A lot of the Southern European countries, the reaction is, you just said one word in my language and we're officially best friends forever now. It's cute, isn't it? I think it's really nice, particularly as an English person. It's really nice to make an effort to embrace other cultures and other languages because us English people can just get away with making no effort at all. In a lot of Northern Eastern Europe, the reaction is, congrats, but why'd you put yourself through this? Yeah, I have seen that things like Russian are very, very difficult to learn. And the French apparently do not want non-French people to speak French. According to this map, I'm sure there's exceptions. Countries where it is illegal to spank slash smack children. So apparently it is legal to spank your children in England? I did not know that. They passed a law in Wales to officially ban it starting 2022. A lot of the world, as you can see, you can hit your children if you want. That's awful. I felt horrible saying that. There are surely better alternatives to teaching good behavior in your children. That is ridiculous. Which countries are Russian passport holders not allowed to enter? But many neighboring countries have completely banned Russians from accessing their country. And it's just really sad, isn't it? Because obviously people in charge of Russia currently, they're awful. They're causing a right ruckus. But it causes people to be horrible to all Russians and that is just not the case. I'm sure there are literally millions of people in Russia that are totally against the war on Ukraine and any other bad things that Russia are doing. These days, my biggest audience on my main channel, Jack Sucks at Life, comes from Russia due to my Russian audio tracks. If there are hundreds of thousands of Russians out there sat enjoying Jack Sucks at Life's play button YouTube videos, then there is no way they are also at the same time I'm just hating the rest of the world. And I just feel so sorry for all of the countries out there that just have people in charge that are awful. I mean, I suppose thinking about it, we can kind of relate to that. Most popular metal band of each country according to Spotify. Ooh, go on, enhance, enhance. Turns out I can't enhance, enhance. The quality is literally awful. I can't really see anything in Europe other than Black Sabbath. Slaughter to Prevail is the Russian lead. That is an incredible name. But Metallica have got the lead in the USA, so I guess nothing else matters. 1300s Netherlands map compared to 1900s, 2000s Netherlands map. Yeah, they have recovered a lot of their land, and is it just due to their flood management techniques? I mean, they've really made the most of it, to be fair. US counties where the African-American population is 25% or more, and you can see it is very much limited to this specific area of the South. You see this kind of thing all over the world, it is just crazy, the long-term impacts that things that have happened in history still have today, just hundreds of years later. Like, presumably, it's gonna take another thousand years or so for these sort of systemics to disappear. Number of Nobel Prize winners in each European country. All right, who has had the most? The United Kingdom, okay. And then who's had the least? There's a few ones out there. We've got Slovakia, we've got Bulgaria, we've got uh, Latvia. Is that Latvia or is that Lithuania? I can never remember. Yeah, it's Latvia. Step it up, Latvia. What are you doing, bro? The most Western point in China is closer to Germany than the most Eastern point in China. Well, that's crazy, 4,600 kilometers to get to Germany compared to 4,800 to get to the other side of China. China is wide. That's why the fact that it only has one time zone is particularly crazy. Where water stress will be highest by 2050. Projected ratio of human water demand to water availability brackets the water stress level in the year 2050. All right, well, that's something to look forward to. Good job, human race. World map according to Bhutan. This is countries that Bhutan recognizes. That's interesting. This is Bhutan, by the way. If you're not sure, little fella near the Himalayas. They only recognize 54 countries. Uh, UK, not one of those. USA, not one of those. That's so interesting. It's part of a deliberate isolationist policy of limiting foreign influence in the state. So they don't want any outside influence, so they've decided to just pretend that we don't exist. Fair enough. The European route, E45, is the longest north to south European route with 5,190 kilometers, which is 3,000 miles. And it starts all the way up in Norway and it ends 
ends at the bottom of Italy. Uh, in a different timeline, that's a Jack Sucks of Geography video. Just vlogging me doing this route. Wouldn't that be incredible? I've got to start doing things like that. Language difficulty ranking as an English speaker. Okay, so once again, the more east you get, apparently the harder it is to learn the language, with exceptions in Kosovo and Romania. We've got a lot of ones. Germany is a two, which is annoying because I'm learning Germany. Why did I not pick the slightly more difficult one? I do find the different genders that words have very difficult to get. That's where I'm kind of losing the will to live when learning German. Non-European countries closest in land area to each European country. Oh, this looks like a good map. That is getting an enhanced enhance. Do you know what? I don't think I understand this. <laughs> I literally don't know what I'm looking at. Non-European countries closest in land area to each European country. Oh, in terms of size, not in terms of location to each other. Right, that makes way more sense. I thought they were saying that Guinea was the closest non-European country to the United Kingdom. And I was like, what? <laughs> Okay, so apparently the United Kingdom and Guinea in Africa are a similar size. Botswana is a similar size to France. I would have thought Botswana was quite a bit bigger. Madagascar is a similar size to Ukraine. That's interesting. Oman, that's a surprising one. Oman I think of as quite small, but obviously here it looks quite big. Obviously there's a bit of distortion up in the north. Japan's a surprising one. I would have thought Japan was way larger than Norway, but apparently they are similar sizes. Switzerland and Bhutan being a similar size. That one I do not find a surprise. Bangladesh and Greece, that's surprising once again. This really shows you it is just really difficult to kind of directly compare different countries in scale from different parts of the map. Access to electricity per African country. It's going to be a sad one. So Northern Africa, basically everyone's got access to electricity, which is fantastic. But then in countries like DRC, it's as low as 9%. Oh my god, 1%. Where's that? Is that South Sudan? No access to electricity. That is crazy. It's 2024, guys. Obviously, there are ways to survive comfortably without electricity. I'm not denying that. However, my assumption is the people in South Sudan are not currently surviving comfortably. I know there's literally a war going on there. Percentage of internet users per African country is quite similar. There are a few differences, like, uh, whoa, where's that? Algeria? No, that's Algeria. That's Libya, right? I often get those two mixed up. Yeah, it's Libya. So compared to the neighbours, Libya have loads of electricity, but less interest in the internet, which is not necessary necessarily a bad thing in that specific scenario. Average number of kids per women per country. Once again, Northern Africa just showing signs of far more development. A lot of the continent having a lot of children per person, which of course is sometimes a choice, but my assumption in this scenario is that it's because of a lack of things like birth control protection and that sort of stuff. Yeah, this map shows the poverty level and you can see a lot of Africa, most of Africa in fact, still basically in poverty, which is very, very sad. Government's position on the Iraq war prior to the invasion that started 21 years ago today. So the orange are countries that participated. That includes the United Kingdom. Yellow were in support. Blue are countries that were opposed to the invasion, which is a lot of countries. Why can't we all just be like Bhutan and just pretend that no other countries exist so then you don't have to invade anyone, you know? European countries by World War II casualties. We can see casualties across all of Europe, but look at the difference in Russia or Soviet Union. 20 million compared to next highest, which is 6.9 million in Germany. 20 million? That's insane. Global distribution of penguins. Ah, finally. They've all been way too heavy, the maps today. What did I title this video at the beginning? I hope it wasn't maps I find epic. <laughs> the global population of penguins is a very cool thing to see. You can see they are entirely in the southern hemisphere. Oh, maybe. We might just dip up in Ecuador, Galapagos Islands. But yeah, look at that. We've got penguins all down the south of Australia, all of New Zealand. This little dot is the Galapagos Islands. A few in Africa as well, and then and tons in Antarctica. Oh, that's amazing. Google searches for skin tanning slash skin whitening. I didn't even know skin whitening was a thing. But it's exactly what you think it is. It's a cosmetic procedure that tries to get you a paler skin tone. I mean, the map makes perfect sense. All the pale people want to be darker and all of the darker skinned people want to be paler. Well, not all, actually. Just the people that have actively gone to search one or the other. Countries mentioned in the Bible. That's rather interesting, isn't it? I mean, it makes perfect sense, obviously, based on where and when it was written. United Kingdom not mentioned in the Bible. Interesting. Ship logs from the 18th to 19th centuries versus 1945. Oh, this is a cool looking piece of data. So the black lines are routes that ships have done. So you can see the outlines of the continents are created, like Africa, South America. We can see back in 18th and 19th century, we didn't have things like the Suez Canal. So if you wanted to sail from Europe to over here, you'd have to go around Africa, which is kind of crazy. You can see a lot of back and forth from US to Europe.
group over the Atlantic. But then if we scroll down to 1945, you can see the continents are far better defined and we actually have routes through Panama Canal and through Suez Canal as well. So you can skip going all the way around Africa. Oh, the side by side is actually really, really interesting to look at. Oceania, if Zealandia never sank. So Zealandia is a continent that is now under the water. And that actually really switches things up. So modern day New Zealand is kind of this area here. So much land is submerged and all of these little island countries like Tonga and Fiji actually become quite large countries that border each other. Really interesting to think about. And on that note, we'll end off the video. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already because, you know, if you've made it this far in the video, you want to see more videos from me. So please subscribe. Thank you very much. Oh, and also, buy me U2s. That was it, 12th of April. Cheers. Got a little globe as a reference to Jack Sucks of Geography. <laughs>